I'm going to be a real good psychologist. I'm going to have an office at home, and I'm going to be able to take care of my kids, and my husband's going to go to work, and everything's going to be fine. I've always wanted to be a computer programmer. I'm really going to medicine because I love it. I would like to, like, own a business, not be employed. I would like to be the owner of something. There's a lot of options here on the reservation, too, because we need a lot of doctors and lawyers. Just put everything off until I know something has to be done, then that's when I'll put my mind to it. That's what I've been doing all my life. I, don't, I can't see myself changing just like that. Are you ready? difficult because you don't you have to take the responsibility for yourself that the teachers and your parents used to take for you. I would say think about it a little harder because it's your future. You're, you're deciding your future now. Do not drop out and don't be messing around in school. Look beyond the rainbow. See what's coming. I realize that the only direction for you to go is ahead. And if you want to look back and if you want to think, well, if this would have not happened to me, I would have done this, I would have done this. You'll never do anything. Organize your thoughts and organize what you want to do and how you're going to do it and just do it and not let like, really anything affect you. What does the future hold? Choice is coming. My short goal right now is to be good in rodeo this weekend. My long goal or my intermediate goal is to get my idea in nursing degree. And my long-term goal is to have a successful farm enterprise. I start thinking too, I better have an answer when they ask me what I you know what I want to do with my life. You've got to take control. Are you ready? Are you ready? Keep an open mind. High school, get prepared. Basic skills will get you there. Resume, interview, new job, what to do. Fear of failure, win, lose, overcome. You can choose. Are you ready? Are you ready? Family, friends, what you need. Courage, hope, you'll succeed. Interest, value, self-esteem. Explore yourself, hold that dream. Are you ready? Let's get to it. Be a force, you can do it. Look beyond the rainbow. See what's coming. What does the future hold? Joy. Are you ready? That's a tough question. Ready for what? To look for a job? To go out on an interview? To continue your education? Or maybe it's all of these things. I'm Holly Robinson and I'm an actress. But when I was in high school, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to be. Or for that matter, what I had to do to make my dreams a reality. I thought I wanted to be a singer, and I still do. But I wasn't real sure about the other kinds of jobs that were out there, or what it would take to get ready for a career in any of them. And that's what this program is all about. We want to help you think about your future. We're not going to tell you what you should do or how you should do it, but we are going to get you to think about the different kinds of jobs that are available and what it takes to get one. There are a lot of opportunities out there in the career world. The hard part is figuring out where they are and how to take advantage of them. That's why graduating high school can be both the most exciting and the most frightening time of our lives. It's a time when we have to leave the familiar surroundings of the classroom and face our next real challenge, the reality of what we want to be. The particular area of engineering I plan to go into is aeronautical engineering. I want to be a therapist. I desire to become a veterinarian as well as a marine biologist. I have no idea. I was either considering becoming a firefighter or going into realty. Be a trainer with the dolphins at SeaWorld. I want a regular day-to-day -day job and I also want to 
produce my own art. I wanted to move in the fields of communication. I'd like to go to the Peace Corps and go to Africa. Mm, become a lawyer. So I want to be astronaut, someone to be political activist. I guess I don't really know, but my, my basic plan is to go to the Marines and make a career out of it. Well, I would like to be a child psychologist. Be a doctor or to do something that deal with medical. Either an actress, hopefully, or I want to be a high school or university level drama teacher. I've always wanted to, you know, go into like care, you know, just cosmetology, like makeup, you know, skin care and stuff. And after I finish school, I want to be a police officer. If I couldn't get, be a fireman, I'd be a, uh, I'd try to be a professional baseball player. If not, then I had to settle with accountant. We all have different interests, and it's a good thing, because everyone can't become a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. In fact, only 59% of the nation's graduating class will even go to college. And that's OK, too, because for some people, the best education will be found on the job or through internships or trade schools. But no matter where your interests lie, the most important thing you can do is to finish high school. Remember, getting an education is the key to getting a job. And the 1990s are a great time to be entering the job market. There's more opportunity out there today than ever before. Each year, there are less people entering the job market. And when you consider that over the last eight years, the US economy has created almost 20 million new jobs, well, that means more opportunity for you. Less people entering the workforce, more jobs to fill. Sounds like the 90s are the right time to be starting a career. So what are the hot jobs of the 1990s? Well, we checked this out with the U.S. Department of Labor, and here's what we found. The top 25 jobs on the growth track of the 90s. Now, these are only the 25 fastest growing jobs. The labor force needs all kinds of workers, from the engineers who design our cars and appliances to the machinists who make the tools to repair them. Who will fill these jobs? You will. Are you ready? Sometimes we just live in the present. We're high school students can't always handle the thought that one day we're going to have to go outside and have a full-time job and worry about insurance and mortgage payments and car payments. I think the most concern I have right now and a lot of my friends is how we're going to pay for college. <laughs> it really worries us. We all want to get into a certain college and do a certain thing and be able to do like what we enjoy. As far as the future, I'm looking forward to trying to get wealthy. I don't know what I'll be doing. I don't know where I'll be. I don't know if I'll be able to succeed. In a way, I want to leave school, like already graduate. In a way, I want to stay. We talk about like how it's going to be and if we're still going to be friends and like our careers and all. Sometimes I think about the future and you know see what lies ahead of me, and that I should you know take notice of this. That hey, I'm not going to be a teenager all my life. I'm going to be an adult so. Thanks a lot, guys. When you look at the characters in a movie or on TV, it's hard to imagine that if these were real people, if Indiana Jones was really an archaeologist, if I were really a cop, well, we would have had to prepare for these jobs through years of training and education. Hollywood glorifies the job market. For example, when we think of Top Gun, we think of Tom Cruise as a heroic pilot. But what about the engineer who designed the plane, or the mechanic who maintained it, or the service clerk who cleaned it up? Every occupation we can think of has an industry full of jobs supporting it. Before I became an actress, I thought that the film industry was primarily made up of writers, actors, directors, and a few other people who helped them put it all together. But when I started working in the business, I realized that there were actually thousands of important jobs, each crucial to the success of a film or television program. Stunts, makeup, 
wardrobe, special effects, accountants. All you have to do is look at the credits at the end of a film and you'll see how many jobs there are. Well, it's the same in any business. For every job we know about, you could run a list of credits with the other jobs surrounding it. You want to be a chef? Well, let's roll the credits. You get the point? There are more jobs out there than we can even imagine. The question is, how do we prepare for them? I believe preparation and dedication can really help a person um, be successful in anything they can try. It's just being determined and following through. My main focus is to, to learn as much as I can in high school and not to take things so fast that I don't know my head spinning. Being involved in other activities helps you get your self-esteem up, motivation, and it just gets you, it's like preparation for other things also. I think you need to think about your future so you can plan ahead and take the courses in high school that you can start to help you when you go into college. I'm glad I'm not graduating this year because I think I need this extra year to prepare. I believe you start early in life setting your patterns and what you do now will affect what you do later. If you get a good foundation now, it'll be easier in the end. If you don't know what you want to do now and you're in high school and you're in the 12th grade, maybe you should sit down and look at all the options that are around you and go with something that you already have because a lot of people are given natural talents and abilities. And if you can draw, think of being an artist. If you can write, think of being a writer. From the time I was a little girl, I always knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a singer. My first microphone. Everything I could pick up in one hand became a microphone, and any poor member of my family sitting in one place for more than two seconds became my audience. But things don't always turn out the way you think they will. I didn't become a singer after high school. Instead, I went to college and majored in psychology and foreign languages. But even while I was in school, I continued to sing at nightclubs on the weekends. So what's the moral of this story? Well, I'm still not known as a singer. I'm known as an actress. But singing is still my first love, and soon my first album will be released. And that's because I kept my options open and continued to pursue my dreams, even while taking the practical route of going to college. I didn't know about the skills that went beyond those you can learn in school. Skills like communications, teamwork, and problem solving. These are probably the most important parts of any job, yet until we begin our careers, we're not even exposed to them. So what skills are expected of us when we enter the labor market? We ask the people who do the hiring. One of the key things when we look at people coming into the organization is, do they have some basic skills? Again, thought leadership, a methodical way of thinking, a problem solver. Some of the skills and qualifications that we look for in the people we hire are an ability to communicate very well. The ideal employee, as far as I'm concerned, is someone who's self-motivated, someone who's an achiever, is interested in learning, they want to grow, they take things on, they volunteer to do additional tasks. It takes a lot of people to run a major organization. And if you're perceived as not being a team player, you're not going to be around very long. Teamwork is not just communication, it's really everyone working together for a common goal. When you think about work habits or work ethics, again it comes back to the question of, can this person be trusted? Are they liked? Are they fair? Do they motivate? You have your reputation, and if your reputation isn't good, it's because you've made some mistakes, I think, most likely in the ethical area. Everything's changing so fast. You've got to be able to adapt and change and be flexible. You'd better be computer literate. Uh, you'd better be looking at the next generation of technology. Only the best qualified people are going to really have an opportunity to get the best jobs. Resumes are critical. I want a resume that's typed, and that resume is even more impressive if it's, if it's off a computer. You have to be very careful about a resume because they really are a first impression. And sometimes they're a lasting impression. It is your foot in the door to a corporation. What you're trying to do with the resume is to get an interview. The first thing I would recommend for someone coming in on an interview 
is that they learn as much as they can about the company with which they're interviewing. Uh, because that gives a good impression right off the bat. The people that are effective in interviews are those that have prepared. Someone that's going to do a good job, they need to come in and, and be serious and be really interested in the job, and you can sense that. People are going to feel that excitement and the confidence that you have about yourself, and they're going to want you on their team. There's no better way to learn about what it takes to succeed in the career world than to ask people who are already a success. We spoke to five such people, each with a completely different story to tell. Our conclusion? There's more than one way to make it. In high school, at least I didn't know what engineering was all about. I knew I wanted to be engineering or science or something technical like that. Um, and in my physics courses, the electricity I found the most interesting. So I had that direction towards engineering and, uh, and electronics and that type of stuff and found that really interesting. And then when I hit college, it allowed you to get more focused and see more details of what there is out there. But if you want to be that person that goes into the industry um, and go out there and solve problems that the industry has, then you do need to be focused and need to be applied and need to be aware of industrial problems. Some grad students that I know, they every summer they go work for somebody I re highly recommend that. That's an opportunity to actually try out the water and see what it's like and see if that's what you want to do. One other thing, though, is when you graduate, you haven't finished your career. I mean, you still have to plan your career and keep planning what you're going to do with it and how you're going to develop yourself. And so actually, yeah, I don't know, maybe in 10 or 20 years, if I get tired of this, maybe I will change. Maybe I'll be an electrician and wire houses or, oh, who knows, maybe I'll drive a cab. Who knows? I have that freedom to make that move. But, the, but if I'm a cabbie, I don't have the freedom to become an IC designer. I don't have that power. But because I have picked my direction and picked my skills and polished them up and have presented myself as somebody that is useful to industry, I have that ability to move around and have some freedom. I chose a vocational school rather than a college, a four-year college because I felt like it would get me out into the job force a lot sooner. Uh, the uh, training that I received in one year prepared me to go on and to become licensed in that field that I majored in. I knew if uh, I wanted to become a salon supervisor manager, I had to first learn to work with the people that I was working with, learn the ins and outs of the uh, department, basically just build a rapport with Hi. my associates as well as my customers. Okay. My goal will, uh, has really been met we'll as far as that way. part of it. Any yeah, vocational okay. field well, uh, that go you would choose as a uh, career, we'll I would side, suggest to go bag, out and, um, and get involved in the different areas, ask questions, visit uh, business establishments, talk to people that are in different trade areas or different trade fields, find out if uh, whatever it is, if it's the length of time it takes, whether you have to be certified, whether you have to be licensed, what, what are the do's and don'ts about it before, and, and make your decision from there. Well, any time you have a tragedy in your life, and it can be something that's noticeable, such as me with a, with a skiing accident, broken back, something that's just psychological, which is something that you're going through internally that nobody can really see but that you're only aware of, you start searching for something, uh, something to hang on to, something to, to believe in. There was a lot of people saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. And for me, I had to think, what do I want? I finally had to sit down and think, what do you want for the rest of your life? What do you want to be doing five years from now, ten years from now? And that's when I decided that if I wanted the type of life that I wanted, then I was going to have to go back to school. I was going to have to get the degree. As an economic analyst, I do a lot of different things in an oil and gas company, which is what I work in. I've never been afraid to do anything that they've asked me to do. And I've always tried to go a little bit beyond what they've asked me to do. The only thing that separates the mediocre from the successful is the willingness to do it, to make the sacrifices, the discipline, the stick to itiveness, the positive attitude. And those are, are things that carry through in all aspects of your life, whether it be 
in my case in athletic training or on the job or raising a family or anything that you want to do in order to be good at it you've got to have the right attitude toward it you've got to have the discipline and you've got to to set those goals if you want a certain career it, whatever you want to do there's a way to accomplish that regardless of your background disability anything like that if you want to do it there's there's ways to get it done you just can't give up After dropping out of high school, it soon became a reality that I would be going to work. I would have to make my own way. It would be very difficult for me to change companies right now to the position that I currently have with the salary rate that I'm at now without a degree. Um, most of the positions that are being filled for hotel controllers are much younger people with degrees, even though they don't have the years of experience they uh, do get the jobs quicker than those of us without college degrees. Because I was not looking toward the future when I was in high school, I have had to struggle through all the different uh, jobs and the different steps up the ladder. If I had continued my college degree, I could have left um, college and joined a, a hotel company as at the very minimum an assistant controller. I would not have had to be a night auditor, an accounting clerk. I would have just made it to that one step below the top level in any hotel accounting department. If I had the opportunity to do it over again, I definitely would finish high school with my class. I would definitely pursue a college degree and I would stick with it until I obtained that degree. When I signed with the Cowboys as a, a free agent, I mean, there were 100 other rookies there trying to make that, that team. There were a lot better athletes than Drew Pearson. There was guys that were bigger, faster, stronger. And, uh, you know, you wonder what's the difference going to be you make it and the guy next to you not making it. Well, I think the difference was discipline. Being a professional athlete, you know going in, your lifespan as a professional athlete is going to be very limited. The average uh, lifespan for a professional football player is three and a half years. While I was involved in professional football, I thought it was uh, important to try to reestablish my goals as a person and try to uh, direct my energies not only on an athletic level but mentally to find out what's going on in the Cowboy organization and try to prepare for a career beyond professional football. If your goal is to become a professional athlete and you fall short, you might end up, end up as a coach. You might end up as an athletic director. There's all types of things connected with sports that can give you the same satisfaction as if you reached your ultimate goal. It's the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to his commitment to excellence. The key word there is commitment. If you make that commitment, to excel, and if you fall short, you're not going to fall very short of your goal, and you're going to be successful no matter what you do. So that's what it's all about. So far, we've heard a lot of advice from a lot of different people. We've heard about ambitions, dreams, and career paths. And if you read between the lines, you can find a few common themes. First and foremost, if you can't go to college, at least finish high school. The more education you have, the better off you are. Let's face it, high school graduates have a lot easier time finding jobs than high school dropouts. Next, learning is ongoing. Not just memorizing texts, but learning how to think, using the information to solve problems. We've also heard that it's a good idea to get experience in your field of interest. This could mean a part-time job, an internship, or even helping out for free. We've learned not to fear circumstances that could lead to failure. We can overcome almost any obstacle if we put our minds to it. We've seen that there can be opportunities beyond the obvious, so stay open to your own changing interests. You don't have to decide what you want to be today because your interests may change tomorrow. And finally, if you are looking for some direction, take the time to know yourself. Ask yourself these questions. What are my interests? What do I enjoy? And can I make a career out of it? Then start by setting yourself some short-term goals. You gotta have a goal to shoot for. 
and even if you just take it little by little, you make little goals and you know do it week by week, month by month, you know, just something to shoot for and make sure you complete it. When you see something you want, you have to go for it. No matter how hard it may be, you have to keep trying. If you fall off, just get right back on. One dream is to live in Kentucky and have a big horse ranch with everything and and then one dream is to be a, a big business executive with lots of money and have a nice place. Any goal is realistic. I want to have a Jaguar in the, in the driveway, big house, you know, family, everything. But I always feel like, oh God, it's so hard, I'm not going to make it. You put your mind to do it, you can do anything. You know, and I keep on reminding myself what my goals are and I try to achieve them. Uh, my goals are... Uh... I guess it would be uh, something I can, I can look up to, you know, be proud of myself for what I do, accomplish, you know. Achieve one goal at a time, then go to the next and then life will be easy. We got a good chance of conviction. I feel very good about that. Is that why your hands are shaking? If you have something to say, why don't you just say it? You need to talk to someone. I told you, I... You're denying. Why don't you give me a break? Because I'm your superior officer and your friend, Judy. I'm not going to tiptoe around doing nothing while you fall apart. There are people out there who guide us, encourage us, provide us with role models, and offer us the benefit of their experience. These we call mentors. My mentor is my personal manager. She also happens to be my mother. But that's not why I chose her as my mentor. Dolores Robinson, my mom, has many years of experience in the entertainment business as both an agent and manager. That's why she can help me make the right choices in my career. Mentors are important because they help us recognize both the opportunities and challenges that we face in the future. If you haven't decided what you want to do, ask people. Older people can help you. They're more experienced and they know what you're going through and they can show you the right path to take. If something interests you, then, you know, try to find something out about it. Find, like, ask your parents whether they know someone about it and, you know, ask them. My mentor figure was my father. Having a mentor is very, very key. And the more mentors, the better. And then as I uh, got older, uh, got into professional sports and that type of thing, my uh, mentor figure or the person I looked up to most was uh, Roger Starbuck. There are two friends of mine that heavily influenced me by getting involved. Just looking at them and the things that they accomplished last year really inspired me to want to go to college. I was inspired by my teachers that I liked, you know. And having a mentor is someone that you can cry on their shoulder, someone that can help relish in your successes, someone that can give you honest advice. I thought about going into psychology so that I could go back into that environment and I could help other people. And one of my business professors, who also had a master's degree in psychology, uh, spent a whole semester trying to talk me out of it. Um, he had seen me as an undergraduate and knew that I had the ability to make it in the business world. The only person I've talked to in the medical field would be my, my brother's orthodontist. And he, he says that he loves it. I wouldn't mind doing it. One of my mother's friends is a, a lawyer and everything for a bank. And I've kind of, ever since I saw her, I like the way she, I like her styles. A mentor is someone who understands your strengths and weaknesses almost better than you understand them yourself. So what can we do to find this person? First, look at the talents you have or the career you're interested in pursuing. Then call or write to people who work in those fields. If you don't know anyone, ask your parents or your parents' friends. Or check out the library. There are many reference books you can use. And let's not forget the most obvious place. Ask your teachers and guidance counselors for assistance. When you're interested, when you're motivated, when you take steps to help yourself, people like that, and they're usually willing to help you too. As we've seen, there's no right or wrong way to proceed in any career. But if we can leave you with one thought, it's to take action. Or in the words of my mentor, we use obstacles to make us stronger, crises to make us more determined. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Begin it now. Good luck and see you in the career world. <laughs>